What's the easiest pet reptile? Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. So this week we are talking about, in my opinion, the absolute best beginner reptile. This week we're talking all about the crested gecko. Now I want to preface this by saying again, my opinion, and also that just because I think that this is the easiest reptile to keep doesn't mean that you should get this reptile just because I say it's easy. Anytime you get a new pet, please make sure that it is something that you actually want. Any reptile can be a beginner reptile if you are willing to put in the time and effort and research that it takes to properly take care of that animal. Really quick, thank you so much to iHeartGeckos for sponsoring this video. Make sure to stay until the end to find out all about this awesome company. Yeah, let's get into that. So just very quickly to say why I think that they are the best reptile for beginners. The choice for me has always been between this and leopard geckos because leopard geckos are on up there too, but it just came down to lighting and heating and vitamins and the way that you feed them. Those are the things that it came down to. Leopard geckos are also super easy. I just personally think that crested geckos are a little bit easier. In addition, they are are my favorite to just watch and handle because they're different from other lizards. They actually move and do things and their setups are super easy too. So those are just a couple of the reasons that they are all the way up there on my list. Let's talk a little bit about where you can find one. Crested geckos are now very, very readily available basically anywhere. They are sometimes a little bit pricey at about $60 to $80 each currently in this time frame where I live, but I got Dexter, my crested gecko for $35 off of Craigslist and he was a very small little baby and someone was just looking to rehome some of their reptiles. So you can find them for a lot cheaper than that. And there are lots of different morphs. There are morphs that cost thousands of dollars and they're beautiful, but they are readily available. One thing that I wanted to quickly talk about while we are on the topic of finding a crested gecko. Some of them don't have tails. The one thing about crested geckos is that if they lose their tail, it's gone forever. It does not regrow. It's okay. It doesn't affect them. They aren't in pain. It might look a little different. It's called frog butt. It might look a little different, but they're okay. And they're just as deserving of love and attention and a home as any other crested geckos. Just know that. Just wanted to throw that in there for anyone that might just be looking into getting a crested gecko. Sometimes they don't have tails. The setup. So for a baby crested gecko, they're good to go in a 12 by 12 by 18 tank. These guys are an arboreal creature, so they do need climbing room, but that is a very small tank that doesn't take up much space at all. As an adult, you will want to move them up to an 18 by 18 by 24 to give them the appropriate amount of room. But again, that is nowhere near as much space as a 40 gallon breeder will take up or a 7,500 gallon tank, especially when you think about you are taking up room mostly vertically. Yeah, their tanks are just a lot easier than a lot of other creatures. In addition, you can keep them in glass tanks if you want or acrylic or plastic tanks. Those things hold in humidity and these guys like humidity, which means that their tanks don't have to be as heavy as huge glass tanks if you don't want it to be. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about them before. My sponsor, iHeartGeckos, makes awesome conversion kits. So if you have an old 20 gallon and long or something laying around. You can buy these conversion kits, which are very inexpensive, and you have a vertical tank for your crested gecko, which makes these tanks pretty cheap, though that is something else to keep in mind. These guys also don't need any special lighting unless you are growing plants in that tank, which we will get to in a little bit. They don't need any kind of special light. You can use the ambient room lighting or whatever you want on there. You can give them UV light if you want to. You can put whatever 
whatever you want on that tank, which will just serve to give them a day night cycle, but they don't need anything special. And on that topic of lighting, they also don't need heat. They are good to go at room temperature. Now, if you live in a very cold climate or your house gets cold in the winter, you can throw a heat pad or some kind of supplemental heating on their tank, but just normal day to day, they're good in room temperature. And that is one of the biggest reasons that they, in my opinion, are easier than leopard geckos because leopard geckos do need those heat pads and thermostats where crested geckos just don't. So apart from just the tank itself, they are arboreal. They are from a place called New Caledonia, which is beautiful. Look at all of that greenery. In New Caledonia, they live in the trees. So they like greenery, driftwood, sticks, plants, fake or real plants are gonna be wonderful for these guys. And they are a nocturnal species, so they are gonna need somewhere to hide to sleep in the daytime. But again, they don't need a traditional hide. They don't stay on the ground. So just having plants and leaves on the sides of the tank hanging up for them to hide in is gonna be good for them. A lot of people do like to keep cork bark or hanging hides. And again, they like humidity. So I always recommend using a loose substrate like Eco Earth or organic topsoil that doesn't have any kind of manure or vermiculite or chemicals. Anything like that is going to be wonderful because it is made to hold in humidity. I do get questions about impaction and these guys aren't really going to get impacted because they're not going to spend much time on the ground at all. So the risk of impaction isn't the same as it would be a lever gecko or beer dragon that is on the ground 100% of the time. But yeah, impaction risk for things like Eco Earth is practically non-existent. As far as just some quick care tips, this is not an extensive care guide. Temperatures, like I said before, room temperature is perfect. These guys can actually have a heat stroke and die if the temperatures are too high. As far as humidity goes, you want to keep it at between 60 and 80% and it can spike up to 100% because you are gonna be spraying that tank down between once and twice a day, depending on the setup you are using. Humidity needs to be pretty high, which is very, easy to do. Feeding these guys is also super, super easy. And it is another reason that they are above leopard geckos on my easiest list. And that is because they are going to get a majority of their nutrients from a pre-made crested gecko diet. These are just powdered food for them that you mix with water and stick in their tank every day, every other day. And they just lick that up and it gives them everything that they need in the water wild crested geckos do survive primarily off of old fruit that they find. Usually it's rotted fruit and bugs. My crested gecko and garo gecko's favorites are Pangea, but Rapashi is another super popular one. Those mixes already contain all of the fruits that they need, and they also already have all the vitamins and minerals and calcium and all that mixed into the powder form for them. A lot of people do keep their crested geckos 100 percent on these pre-made diets, which is fine. Dexter most of the time will not eat bugs. As a baby, he ate more bugs, but as an adult, he just doesn't want them. But you can definitely feed them bugs throughout the week in addition to these pre-made diets, and that actually will usually help them grow faster. But if you want to feed bugs too, they eat crickets and dubia roaches, black soldier fly larvae, wax worms, anything that you would feed your other animals animals, they will happily digest if your crested gecko will eat bugs. Handling these guys is where it gets a little bit tricky though. Like I said at the beginning of this video, they will lose their tails and they won't grow back if they get scared. And unlike some other reptiles that their tails have to be pulled or injured for them to come off, crested geckos have the ability to just drop their tail just because they feel like it. So just keep that in mind that that is a possibility. And as babies, these guys are very flighty. In New Caledonia, those trees are very high. 
These guys can jump and they will jump, especially as babies. They have special little sticky pads on all of their toes and even on the tips of their tail. And those hands are webbed to help them in jumping through the air. They also will jump onto walls and try to scale your walls. I do not suggest that you allow small children to handle, especially the baby ones. As they get older, they do slow down. So Dexter is perfectly okay with being handled at this point and he likes to get out of his tank sometimes, but they are so cool to handle. The best thing that I could compare what they feel like to is those little sticky hands that you get out of the 50 cent machine that have that sticky feeling to them. That's what they feel like to me. But yeah, super cool. One of my absolute favorite reptiles in my entire house to handle just because they're so cool. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about is for those people that want to test out bioactive setups, crested geckos are the absolute best, in my opinion, to test those bioactive setup ideas or to do your very first bioactive setup for because they are perfect candidates for them and they don't destroy them usually. They love humidity and they're from the rainforest. They love plants. I did my very first bioactive setup with Dexter's tank and it worked for a little bit and then it failed and and I was able to just build him a new one and keep trying until I finally was able to build a successful bioactive setup. He was perfectly fine with me pulling different plants in and out of his tank and me messing around until I got it to where I needed to get it. He made the whole thing super easy and allowed me to learn how to do bioactive setups. The humidity requirements make them great for those setups if that's something that you're even interested in getting into. And the fact that their tanks aren't huge means that you don't have to to spend hours and hours and hours finding all of these different plants to fill a bioactive setup with because a few plants are going to go a very long way in their enclosures. So all of that is just why I feel like they are a wonderful beginner reptile to learn how to do bioactive setups with. But that is it. That's all I got. Again, my opinion, your opinion probably is different, but this is just my opinion on the very best beginner reptile or the easiest reptile for beginners, whatever. Really quick, huge thank you to our sponsor for this week's videos, iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos, as you know, makes awesome conversion kits for arboreal creatures. They allow you to take any old fish tank that you may have lying around and turn it into an upright vertical tank for your arboreal creature just by sticking this door with ventilation in, sealing it with some aquarium safe silicone, and that's it. You're done a new vertical tank for your creature that isn't as expensive as some other brands. Make sure to leave Elle's Reptiles in the How Did You Hear About Us box on the iHeartGeckos page after you make a purchase. Thank you so much to iHeartGeckos for sponsoring this video. As always, if you are not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday. Thank you so much to Nick the Best for following me on Instagram and liking a whole bunch of my pictures. Thank you so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Two easiest setups. I'm sitting there waiting for you to get to a spot where I could slip. You're just listening? <laughs> That's creepy, but okay. Or just a lot easier. That. Yeah. If you guys know my sponsor, iHeart. Okay. And gargle geckos. Favorites are Reposh. Nope. Make sure to. If you, if you part, uh, make sure.